next we introduce a uh, few no notions uh, that are somehow related to prime numbers but we define those for general integral domains not necessarily a set of numbers okay anyway let d be an integral domain and p be an element of d and which is non-zero non-zero and non-unit so it's not a unit okay then we say p is irreducible irreducible so this means definition uh, uh, whenever uh, so let's say uh, p divide uh, a divides p and uh, a is some element of d if this is the case then uh, a is an associate associate of either one or p okay so in this case uh, we say p is irreducible and also related to this we say p is a prime so what this means is that if uh, okay if uh, P divides A, B, and A and B are elements of D. Then what this means, this implies is uh, either P divides A or P divides B. Now, if we consider uh, the set of integers as uh, as an integral domain, then both of these properties, so this and this are uh, properties of prime numbers right if p is a prime number then if some num integer divides p that means a is either one or p itself right so instead of just one or p we say associate of one or p so it's a little bit more general in this definition and also when p divides a product of two integers then that implies uh, p divides a or p divides b so that's possible uh, so this this is also a, a property of prime numbers but these so we separate these two properties and give them names so one is called irreducible and the other is called being a prime so now, now we can uh, talk about these properties similar to uh, those in integers and prime numbers in any integral domains. Next, we define some properties of ideals. Okay, and definition. So let R be a, a commutative ring with an identity. with identity so this is almost an integral domain but uh, it may contain some uh, proper divisors of zero in general okay and one an ideal p of r and p is not equal to r itself is a prime so it's said to be a prime uh, if and only if by definition uh, a and b are elements of r and a b is an element of p then either a belongs to p or B belongs to P. So if this is the case, then we say uh, 
the ideal P is prime. And two, an ideal M of R, where M is not R itself, is maximal. So we say an ideal M is maximal if uh, the following is the case. For, uh, for any ideal I of R, uh, if we have uh, M is a subset of I, and uh, then this implies either uh, I is equal to M or I is equal to R. Okay. In other words, uh, an ideal M is maximal if uh, it is the largest ideal, uh, that uh, largest proper ideal of R. Okay, so if this uh, if this is the case, then it if it implies either this or this, this it means that uh, uh, the only uh, ideal that can contain M is M itself, or uh, the ring R itself. Okay, so that means M is the the largest subset of R that is an ideal. Now, based on these notions, let us give the following theorem. Theorem. Okay, and, okay so R is a commutative ring. with identity. So suppose R is such a, such a ring. Then first an ideal P of R is prime if and only if R over P. So this is a factor ring of R by P is an integral domain. And second, an ideal, ideal M of R is maximal if and only if R by M is a field. And you should recall that a field, any field is an integral domain. You know, uh, so the, ac the axioms of field includes uh, those of integral domain. So that means, so the, this theorem implies that any maximal ideal is also a prime ideal. Okay, let's prove this. Uh, first of all, in both cases, uh, R over P and R over M, they are both commutative rings. And with identity element. Okay. So in the in the first case, uh, if we assume, uh, okay, let P be prime, be a prime ideal. So then what we want to prove is uh, that, uh, so it's an integral domain is a commutative ring with identity and without uh, proper divisors of zero. So the only thing we need to prove is the absence of proper divisors of zero in this case. Okay, so uh, let A and B be elements of R. And elements of uh, uh, 
uh, r by p uh, something like a plus b. So we want to prove the absence of proper divisors of zero. So a plus b, p and b plus p, they are elements of, uh, uh, let's write it, and b plus p are elements of r by p. Okay. And so suppose this product is equal to p. So p is, this is the zero element. Okay. So p is actually p should be written as p, 0 plus p, so 0 element, 0 of uh, r by p. Okay, suppose this is the case. Then uh, by the definition of uh, multiplication of, uh, the, of these elements, so this is equal to a, b plus p is equal to p. Okay, so this means AB uh, is, uh, is an element of P. Okay, but uh, since P is a prime ideal, is prime, uh, we have, uh, we have either A belongs to P or B belongs to P. So therefore, uh, a, uh, a plus P is equal to P or uh, B plus P is equal to P. So that means either A plus P is a zero element or B plus B is a zero element. Therefore, uh, uh, R by P is an integral domain. And, and this theorem says it's if and only if, so we have to prove the converse. So conversely, Suppose uh, R by P is an integral domain. Okay, then uh, let's say uh, let A B be elements of R and assume such that a, B is an element of P. So we want to prove that this ideal P is, uh, is, is prime. Okay, so from here we want to show either A belongs to P or B belongs to P. Okay. Then uh, A plus P times B plus P is equal to a B plus P. But since A B belongs to P, this is equal to P. Uh, because A B belongs to P. Okay, but uh, since P is uh, no, not P, uh, R by P, R by P is an integral domain. integral domain uh, we have uh, a plus b is a zero element or uh, b plus p is a zero element so this means a belongs to uh, a is an element of p or P is an element of P. Therefore, P is prime. Okay, so we are done with part one. Okay, for part two, again, recall that uh, R by M is a commutative ring with uh, the identity element. So in order to show that this is a field, 
we all we need to show is that all it's all non-zero elements are invertible. So here, here, so let's go. So suppose, uh, suppose uh, m is maximal, and now let's take any non-zero element of R by M. So let A be an element of R such that uh, such that A plus M. So this is an element of uh, R by M such that uh, A plus M is not equal to M. So this is uh, 0 plus m. So this is the 0 element. 0, uh, zero uh, element of of r by m. It's ugly. r by m. Okay, so a plus m is a non-zero element. So that's our assumption. And we want to show that this is a uh, invertible. Okay, so if this is the case, then A does not belong to M. Okay, now consider R A is an ideal. So therefore, R A plus M is an ideal as we have seen before. So the sum of two ideals is again an ideal. So and also we have uh, M is a subset of R A plus M. But it is a proper subset. So because A does not belong to M. So uh, M is a proper subset of R A plus M, but M is maximal. So therefore, by the definition of maximal ideals, this ideal must be equal to uh, the ring itself, the ring R itself. So this means there exists some element of R and uh, some element M of M such that uh, XA, so from here we pick an element from here, XA plus M is equal to 1. Uh, because uh, this is equal to the entire ring. So in this ring there is uh, the identity element 1. So some element of, the, of this must be equal to 1. Okay, then hence 1 plus m is equal to uh, xa plus m plus m, uh, which is equal to x a plus m plus m, which is equal to, so m is an element of capital M, so this is equal to x a plus m itself. And this is uh, the product of two uh, elements, x plus m times a plus m. So this product is equal to the identity element of the uh, factor ring. So therefore, uh, this x plus m is the inverse element. Of uh, a plus m. So therefore, so A is an arbitrary element of R, so therefore uh, R over M is a field.
and conversely suppose uh, r over m the factor ring is a field okay then let i be an ideal such that uh, M is a subset of I, which is a subset of R. So we want to show M is maximal. So if this is the case, then either M is equal to I or I is equal to R. So that's what we want to show. So if M is not equal to I, then we, want, we uh, need to show I is equal to R. Okay then there exists some element of R, uh, some element of I, uh, such that A does not belong to M. Okay, so therefore for this element A, uh, A plus M is not equal to M. Okay, so that means A plus M is not a zero element of the factor ring R by M. Okay. Since uh, R by M is a field by assumption, then uh, there is an inverse element of A plus M. So that is that is uh, so we have A plus M times B plus M is equal to 1 plus M. So there is an element of uh, element B such that uh, this holds. Okay, so this times this is equal to 1. So B plus M is the inverse element of A plus A, uh, M. So the left hand side is of course A B plus M. So therefore uh, so A B plus M is equal to 1 plus M which implies that A B is equal to 1 plus M for some uh, element M of uh, capital M. So uh, we uh, we have A is an element of I and M is an element of M, and we have M is a subset uh, of I. So uh, let's see. So subset of I, and we have uh, one is an element of I. Okay, maybe this is uh, this requires a little bit of explanation. So first, A belongs to the ideal, and B belongs to the ring. So by the definition of ideal, A, B must belong to the ideal. Okay, so, so that means, uh, so this left hand belongs to the ideal I, so therefore this right hand side uh, must belong to the ideal. But ideal is a is an additive subgroup, so therefore uh, one must be an element of the ideal itself. So therefore we have this. But anyway, so because of this, uh, and also from a previous lemma in a previous lecture, we know that an ideal, uh, so there is a lemma, ideal, uh, so if an ideal 
containing uh, the 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 identity element of R is uh, R itself. So if an ideal I contains the identity element of the ring, then uh, the ideal itself is the ideal is equal to the ring itself, according to a uh, uh, previous lemma. So therefore, M is maximal, and we are done.